I purchased this antique buffet or sideboard on Facebook Marketplace, and in this 15 minute video, I'm gonna to attempt to remove the paint, restore, refinish, and hopefully preserve some of the damage from the previous owner. The story starts like this. Hi, is this available? Seller, yes, it's available. Dimensions are listed. Me, I restore furniture. I'm curious if there's damage underneath. Seller, no, I already refinished it. It's gorgeous. It is missing a few of the ornamentals, but you can't tell. And yes, I hope you saw this as well. Welcome back to Mad City Modern, a furniture channel. My name is Barry. Let's get started. I'm a firm believer that there's a wealth of knowledge beyond just the internet, and for that reason, I'm going to try and learn some new things about this piece of furniture from this book. Before starting any project, I think it's important to take the time to look over the entire piece so that you know what to expect regarding the work that's involved. For me, it's also an opportunity to imagine all the stories that a piece like this could tell. Escutian. Escutian, the decorative plate encircling keyholes and handles. It's no surprise to find normal wear and tear on a piece that's around 100 years old, but in this case, based on the listing, it's obvious that most of this veneer was removed in the last six months. It's unfortunate that I wasn't able to find much information regarding this piece because the label was mostly peeled off, oftentimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. Now that we know what we're working with, it's time to pick up the pace. I recently did an entire video about brass, and I'm assuming this hardware is brass, but I'll still check to see if it is in fact non-magnetic. I'll move on to removing the drawers and the doors for this piece, and I don't often show what I find inside these pieces, but I couldn't resist with this one. I'll let the hardware boil for about 10 minutes in vinegar. We'll get back to that, but it's time to start removing the paint. To remove the paint, I'll use a combination of the two and a half inch carbide scraper, the detailed carbide scraper set. I'll also try for the first time the soda blaster using fine walnut shells as the blasting media. And I'll finish using clean strip premium stripper for the details. I've never been an IT guy or even a furniture person for that matter. So my goal for sharing these videos is to do the best I can to share my experiences. That includes the highs and the lows of projects like this. Hopefully you can find a way to relate. Occasionally I receive a nasty comment from a viewer. However, 99% of you have been extremely supportive and 
I'll always be grateful for that and always continue to find ways to try and be creative with sharing this journey. I hope you'll observe the background in these next few shots because here in Wisconsin, it's about to change drastically. It's safe to say that the season for working on furniture outdoors is over for a while, so I'll move everything inside. Oftentimes, older furniture pieces will give you clues if you're looking close enough. In this case, the hardware, Stanley SW, made in USA. I'll be using this buffet in my shop, and although I'm not aiming for perfection, I don't want to ever skip over any details on any project, so I decided to remove the top in order to remove the rest of this paint. Removing paint from furniture is one of my favorite steps of any project. It's hard to explain, but this is in many ways very therapeutic for me. So I hope that in the next few moments, you'll receive some of the same satisfaction from watching this process. I decided to remove the rest of these accent pieces since there were several missing on this buffet. I'm sure there will be some controversy as to whether this is a restoration or just a refinish. To me, my intention is just to preserve the damage that's here, the character if you will. I'm going to be using this in my shop and for that reason I wanted more of a rustic look and I hope that I can achieve that.
Wisconsin winters can be brutal. Today was minus six Fahrenheit. In order to keep products from freezing in the garage, I keep them in the refrigerator that I'm not using for the winter. I just keep a light in here and can typically keep the temperature between 50 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. A huge thank you to the viewers who gave me this brilliant idea. I mentioned earlier in the video that I will be attempting to preserve some of the damage, so you'll notice several pieces of the veneer missing on this door. I'm just using several products, including this wax, to conceal some of the blue paint that's still visible, and also to tie in some of the damaged spots. One of the biggest challenges for this project was tying all of the different wood types together, blending the colors. I'm using mahogany gel stain, walnut gel stain, walnut toner lacquer, and also the wax which you just saw. Here I'm covering over poplar, and now I'll cover over everything with a dark walnut toner lacquer. The nice part about this, you just keep spraying until you get the desired effect. I sanded this entire piece in preparation for a wood polish and conditioner. I'll be using Howard's Feed and Wax. It's very similar to using a moisturizer for your hands. Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and if you feel that I've earned your subscription, please consider taking a few seconds and subscribing to the channel, leaving a thumbs up on this video, and saying hello in the comments. Hearing from all of you is one of the most rewarding parts of this process for me. If you're looking for more content, I'll also be uploading a new tool video to Mad City Restorations. Feel free to check that out this weekend as well. Goodbye for now.